Hello and welcome to Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. Join us now as we enter our weekly Sunday service with praise and worship along with practical teachings from God's Word. And now, here's the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church Mass Choir. The Mass
when I pray. I get ready. Consolation. When I pray. Yeah. I just bow down. Oh, my knees. I say, Lord. Get ready. Yes, sir. Consolation. When, when, when I pray, I get here in the time of trouble. When, when I pray, said I get help in the time of trouble. When I pray, I I just bow down. I say, Lord, need you to help me, help me, help me, please. I need help in the time of trouble. Yes, sir. When I pray. I get a friend. Yes, sir. When I I'm friendly. All right now. Lord, when I pray, yeah. I get a friend. When I am friendly. When, 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 when I pray. Say, Lord, you help me, please. I get a friend. Hey, hey, get our friend when I'm friendly. When, when I pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, God bless you and good morning as we greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, yes. Jesus, who is the risen Christ. We're grateful and we're thankful that it's in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. This is just another day. Just another day. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. That the Lord Hallelujah. has kept us. For that, if nothing else, that alone, I'm going to bless his name. I'm going to praise his name. Yes. For in times the likes of these, we cannot take life for granted. Amen. Amen. For every day is a grace gift. And today we are blessed of God to once again be found present and accounted for in the land of the living. Well, welcome to the worship experience at the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church of Fresno, California. We're grateful and thankful to be able to bring our ministry to you and show you what's happening within the four walls of this church and share with you whether you be tuning in by way of the radio and or tuning in by way of your Facebook page or your YouTube channel. Thank you and welcome uh, to this ministry experience. 
Listen, I'm on assignment today. I want to go ahead and dive into the Word of God, but I don't want to do so without acknowledging the fact that our music ministry set the atmosphere. And for that, we are grateful and thankful for uh, those minstrels and certainly uh, those who are ministering by way of their gifts on the um, instruments. We bless and thank God for them. If you are ready to hear from heaven, let's dive into the Word of God. I want to share today from a gospel that is recorded by St. John. There's a word in that 14th chapter of John's gospel that I want to uh, lift out for prayerful consideration. In that 14th chapter, I want to look at verses 25 through 27. St. John chapter 14, verses 25 down through and inclusive of 27. Now, if you're sitting on your couch or wherever it is that you're tuning in from, go get your Bible. I'll wait on you. And as always, I, I can't see you. I guess you can see me, uh, but I can't hear you either. But when you get that passage, St. John chapter 14, 25 through 27, make it known to your whole neighborhood by saying, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Here it is, it reads this way. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. And certainly all praises be unto God. Now God, in the name of Jesus, it is our tall task to tell the story of the gospel. We dare not stand in our own strength, O oh God, but we need you by way of your Holy Spirit uh, to send down a fresh anointing. Hide me first behind the cross of Calvary because there's no one who needs to see Kevin, but all of us need to see Christ. And so God, I yield my mind and my mouth, make them your instruments. Anoint both and then ultimately anoint our ears that as the word goes forth, it reaches with pinpoint precision the target uh, that is needful, that we may hear what heaven has to say. And when all is said and done, your name be glorified, your people be edified, and that old devil, wherever he may rear his ugly head, may he be horrified. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. St. John, again, the 14th chapter, verses 25 through 27, uh, there's a powerful word. I want to highlight, however, for our prayerful consideration, that 26th verse. Verse number 26, it reads this way. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. I want to use it as a thought for a few moments. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Somebody ought to be clapping your hands right there, right now. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Saints of God, on last Sunday, if you tuned in, you will be reminded of the fact that we celebrated what is known as Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is day 50 post-resurrection. Uh, it is that uh, day that happens after crucifixion, after resurrection, and then after ascension. 
In 40 days, Jesus ascended, but on day 50, uh, he had promised those who would meet in Jerusalem that there would be a promise. Uh, he promised them that they would get something that was so needful uh, that they would uh, be uh, uh, engrossed by and engage with. He promised the third person of the Holy Trinity. It's in um, that passage that we found out that there was an introduction of the third person of the Holy Trinity. Uh, this Sunday, I wanted to revisit uh, the whole notion of the Holy Spirit because it is my contention that, as I, like I said last week, most of us know God as the Father. Most of us know God as the Son. Uh, but not all of us know uh, who the Holy Ghost is in his fullness. I'm, I'm convinced uh, that uh, many of us, because of our lack of familiarity with the personhood of the Holy Ghost, we miss him even when he's trying to knock at our doors. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, they, they are synonymous and uh, both are uh, referred to as the third person of the Trinity. And it's here in this text, uh, prior to Jesus' crucifixion, that he sits at the table with his disciples and he gives instruction concerning what they uh, would encounter by way of introduction. It's here he's sitting at the table and he he senses the somber disposition of the disciples as he's laying out the plan that he would be crucified. He's, he's sitting at the table and he, he senses uh, this, this sense of hopelessness and helplessness. And he, he says to them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. Uh, he, he, he understands that there's such a heaviness uh, at what they'd be losing that he reminds them, listen, I have to go because if I don't go, uh, you'll never uh, be introduced to the Holy Ghost. He gives instructions prior to the introduction. And here it is. Here it is. Uh, he, he says to them, uh, listen, I've got to go so that the comforter could come. I, I want you to meet him. I want you to understand who he is. I want you to embrace him. He is the Holy Ghost, but he's not the kind of ghost that you ought to be afraid of. My problem oftentimes within the confines of our churches is that uh, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is so foreign to us by way of his operation that uh, we fear him. And, and, and if the truth be told, uh, oftentimes within uh, our churches, our ushers are trained that when the Holy Ghost tries to move, come on, uh, come, come on and, and come up here and, and grab a hold of somebody, wrench around somebody if you need to, and grab sister so-and-so because you don't want her to hurt herself. Uh, and, and if you get too out of pocket, the ushers are trained, Brother Aaron, to pick you up, come on somebody, and take you away from the fire. Holy Ghost is, is nobody that you need to fear. He's nobody that you need to fight. Come on, somebody. He's somebody that you ought to friend. Uh, and Jesus, in this, in this instruction concerning uh, the soon-to-come introduction, he says to them, uh, listen, I want you to know that the comforter is coming, and he's coming for you. And that ought to be some good news for somebody. Uh, and I thought this was a powerful passage to present today on the heels of the introduction of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. I wanted to follow up uh, with you so that you understand that there is instruction concerning the introduction. So now that you have the Holy Ghost, you know what he's there for. Somebody ought to clap your hands right along in there. Uh, Couch deeply, uh, Brother Aaron, uh, within the crevices of this text is the Christian's cure for our current crisis. <laughs> you all know how to handle uh, the coronavirus 
COVID-19, you want to know how to handle the crisis of protests and, and, and unrest everywhere? Couch right here. Within the crevices of this text is the Christian's cure uh, to this crisis because we got something that can allow us to keep our cool even in the midst of uh, heated situations. Here it is. Here it is, saints of God. Um, thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> thank God uh, that uh, he gave us by way of introduction the Holy Spirit. But now I want to give you the instruction concerning who he is. And I said last week, stop calling the Holy Ghost an it because it's offensive. Come on, somebody. He is a person and the third personality of the Holy Trinity. And he must be embraced as friend, not foe. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. And I'm so grateful that I'm saved. I'm so grateful that I'm sanctified. And I am so grateful that I'm filled with his precious Holy Ghost. And the more I get to know him, the more comfortable I am with decreasing so that he can increase because he's the intelligence of God. And when I'm scratching my head wondering what to do next, he gives me exactly what I should do and what I should say. When I let him have his way and I get Kevin out of the way, the Holy Ghost can instruct me. Thank God. For the Holy Ghost. Here it is. Here it is. Um, I want to work backwards in this text uh, because I want to cover uh, as, as conclusively as I can why, we she, why you and I should be thankful for the Holy Ghost. In verse 27, uh, uh, the, the, the author here seems to suggest that the reason why we ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost is that Jesus reminds those believers and thus we who are believers that he is our consolation. You're looking for point number one. There it is. You ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost because in, in concordance uh, with, in accordance with verse 27, he is our consolation. Look at verse 27. Verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You got to remember the context of this conversation. He's sitting at the table with his disciples and there is a, a, a dread in the room because he's telling them, I'm getting ready to leave. Those who had followed him for three years, those who had seen him handle situations time and time again, uh, they're sitting there and the master is saying, I'm getting ready to go. And literally, uh, the mood and the tone and the tenor uh, of the text tell us uh, that it's such a somber situation that he has to remind them, don't let your heart be troubled. I feel you. I understand your pain. I get it. I get it. I'm getting ready to go. And you think that I'm going to leave you by yourself. But the good news is I got to go because you need the third person. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I know that you're in the midst of some peril, but I'm going to leave you with some peace. He says, peace I leave with you. I'm talking about I'm going to leave you with a power uh, to be consoled that is so much bigger than the hand of anybody uh, you run into. You don't have a friend whose hands can console you the way the power of the Holy Ghost is going to be able to console you. Uh, listen, you, you're going to have some friends in your life uh, that are there for a season, uh, but when the going gets tough, you're going to experience uh, that sometimes they get going. Come on, somebody. 
Uh, there's going to be some people that come in and out of your life that you think got your back only to find out that they may stab you in the back. I'm going to leave you with a consoler that will give you peace from the inside out. Y'all ain't talking back to me. You'll have the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. I got to go. I got to go because I've got to leave you a comforter. One of the problems that so many people are having uh, with the present administration, uh, number 45. So many pre- people are having a problem uh, because as they compare him to number 44, they're seeing that in number 44, we had a consoler. That when uh, the going got tough, he would address the country and let them know everything is going to be all right. That that hope uh, if you keep it alive, it's going to make things, God, God is able to make things all right. Uh, listen, listen, uh, stop looking for some consolation from the wrong place. I, I don't need President uh, Trump to give me the consolation uh, that the Holy Ghost can give me. That no matter what's going on, I don't care what's happening on the outside, I've got a consoler and chief on the inside. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He is my my consolation. But not only does this text intimate in verse 27 that I ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost because he is our consolation, but in accordance with verse 26, the B clause, I ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost because he is our confirmation. Mm -hmm. It's right there in the text. Bird is right there in the text. David is right there in the text. Uh, verse 26, the B clause says, uh, He shall teach you all things. And get this uh, bring all things to your remembrance. <laughs> in other words, in other words, uh, within you lives a confirmation of what I've been telling you all of this time. In other words, you're, you're going to hear some things again that I've said and it's going to be uh, the Holy Ghost that's living in you that's going to confirm that I said it. You, you're, you're going to be in such turmoil in, in certain seasons of your life uh, that, that you're not going to know head from tails. Uh, and when people talk, uh, you're going to listen. Uh, but when you listen and hear what I've already told you, the Holy Ghost will confirm for you that I've already told you. Can I, can I suggest to you that many times Satan loves to use crisis situations to cause a selective amnesia? That you, you feel like you're going through so much uh, that you've never been through before. That, that, that is so overwhelmingly difficult right now that you'll never get through this. And then the preacher stands up and say, weeping may endure for a night. And the Holy Ghost and you will shout out, but joy comes in the morning. It, it, it'll confirm for you that this word is real. Uh, every now and then you'll have your back against the wall and you're scratching your head uh, wondering, uh, can you do it? And the Holy Ghost We'll, we'll holler back at you and, and let you know I can do all things. I wish I had some help here. Uh, through Christ that strengthens me. I, it's confirmed because the Holy Ghost is in me. And I stop by to tell you in this season of perilous times, uh, there will be false teachers. Uh, but you got to try the Spirit by the Spirit, confirming that it is of God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because I got. Uh, some confirmation on the inside. I, I don't have to receive every spirit. I, I ain't got to receive everything that comes my way. If, if it don't clap back with the Holy Ghost in me, come on somebody. I don't, I don't have to receive it. I can reject it because the Holy Ghost in me is my confirmation. Thank God. Thank God for why? the Holy Ghost. He is our consolation. He is our confirmation. But I'm out when I tell you this. I told you I wasn't going to keep you long today. I might want to tell you this. Dick Montague, uh, this text intimates to us that not only is he our consolation, not only is he our confirmation, but in accordance with verse 26, the A clause, 
we discover that he is our counselor. <laughs> oh, y'all don't know when to give God praise. Somebody at home ought to be ripping up the carpet, giving God praise. Somebody ought to be having your neighbors call the cops on you right now because you realize uh, that he is our counselor. He, he's my teacher. Here it is. Here it is. Come here. Let me prove it to you. Verse 26 says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Here it is. Here it is. Get this. Check this out. Watch this. He is, or he shall, teach you all things. Mm -mm, Y'all don't know what to shout. <laughs> Let me try it again. Okay. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So not only is he going to bring all things to my remembrance, um, not only is he going to console me, a part of his functioning in my life is to teach me all things. <laughs> the stuff that, uh, that seminary can't teach me, come on somebody. <laughs> The stuff that my Sunday school teacher might not understand. The stuff that my pastor might miss. I've got resident in me. The Holy Ghost, who is my teacher. The complexities of scripture are, 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 are so uh, magnanimous uh, that, that it's so easy to miss or misunderstand. Uh, they're so deep sometimes. The riches of righteousness that are couched in the text that, that I cannot read them with my carnal mind. I don't care how educated I am, uh, I cannot understand this stuff with my intellect. Come on, somebody. I can't be too heady about this stuff because the truth of the matter is uh, uh, the carnal mind can't receive the things of the Spirit. I got to have the Holy Ghost in me to teach me some stuff that only he can teach me. You try to read this book, called the Bible, uh, from an intellectual perspective, uh, you'll get some nuggets of knowledge, but it won't transform you. Come on, somebody. You, you'll know a whole lot of scripture, uh, but in all you're getting, the Bible says get an understanding, and the only way you're going to get an understanding is that you need the great teacher who is the Holy Ghost. Ah, uh, I'm out of here. I'm done. Y'all come on. I'm getting ready to close. Uh, but here is the good news of the text. And this is why you and I can thank God for the Holy Ghost. It is because he is our consolation. Say with me right where you are in your home. He is our consolation. Uh, he, he's able to console. There's not a friend uh, like him. He's able to console. Thank God for the Holy Ghost because he is our consolation but not only is he our consolation in accordance with the text I can thank God for the Holy Ghost because he is our confirmation uh, every time I hear something I've heard before uh, the Holy Ghost on the inside will confirm for me will bring back to my remembrance what the Lord has already said. Every now and then, when I can't get to my Bible, and I ain't got time to tell the devil, time out, let me reach for my sword. The Bible says, hide the word in your heart that you may not sin against him and thank God for the Holy Ghost because he brings back to my remembrance everything that the Lord has told me and somebody ought to give God the praise because every now and then you remember 
hear what the Bible says when your back is against the wall and the devil seems to have you blocked in and you feel like you're in it all by yourself somebody can remember that the word says he will never leave you nor will he forsake you that you're not in this thing all by yourself you'll remember as the old folks say he walks with me can I get a witness y'all he talks with me are there any witnesses he tells me I am his own ain't that some good news hallelujah he's my consolation he's my confirmation but thank God he is my counselor what do you mean pastor he's my teacher he's my master I am his student I am a disciple of Christ Jesus and disciple me I am a lifelong student Mathetes I am a learner and I am a follower and what I learn when I follow him is he will always be there he will never leave me he teaches me that his arms are so sturdy that I can lean and depend on him. Is there anybody who can testify as you walk with him? He teaches you that the enemy has already been defeated. That no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Why don't you shout yes? He teaches me I ain't got to worry, I ain't got to fret, because my God has never failed me yet. If that's your testimony, give God some praise. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you this, as I hurry to my close, the reason why I'm so grateful for the cross, it's because they hung him on the cross. They stretched him wide. They hung him high. He hung his head. And for me, he died. But before he died, he gave up the ghost. Ain't that some good news? He gave it up so you and I can get it. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Breathe on me. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Won't it do it? I say, won't it do it? If you know he will, if you know he can, shout yes. If you know he will, and you know he can, shout yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? I'm so glad I got the Holy Ghost. Thank God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Shout yeah. Shout yes. Shout yeah. Hallelujah. I got him. He's on the right. He's on the left. He's in front, he's behind me, he's all over me. Jesus, 
for the Holy Ghost. Comfort me. Keep me. Hold me. But I don't want to be selfish. Hold everybody who got your Holy Ghost. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. If you got him right where you are, shout yes. If you got him, tear up your carpet and give him some praise. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Father. Thank God for the Son. But oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Listen, I hear something. What is this? I can feel deep inside. What is this? Makes me want to run on and testify whatever it is. It won't let me hold my peace. Deep inside, what is this? Makes me want to run on in this house, whatever it is. It won't let me hold my peace. Everything that has been said 
and everything that has been done in the context of these moments that we've shared by way of the worship and by way of the word it's been geared towards this very moment the sermon said thank God for the Holy Ghost and let me say to you if you don't have Jesus you don't have the Holy Ghost he's the third person and the only way you can get to the Holy Ghost and enjoy this excitement and this uh, Holy Ghost high that you've got to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior I say to you my brother my sister my son and my daughter whoever you are wherever you may be I implore you I beseech you I'm begging you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior for it's everlasting too late listen it doesn't take a theologian to discern that we're living in the last days I, I jokingly said to my my officers just recently and I say it to my wife all the time in my sanctified imagination baby it looked like I'd see Jesus with his bags packed peeking out the peephole of heaven getting ready to come back and he's coming back for a church that is without spot or wrinkle but it's a church everybody in the church ain't right but you're never going to get right on the outside of the church you need to have the church living in you and Jesus says come unto me all ye that labor and a heavy laden I'll give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy my burden is light whosoever will let him come you might say pastor I'm not ready to go to church right now well, listen, you don't have to walk the aisles of anybody's church to get saved. All you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. It's just that simple. And then the process of sanctification begins at the salvation. It's sanctification that you're going to need a church home and a pastor. So if you're not saved, you're my first appeal. But if you're in a backslidden condition and the relationship between you and God has slid in, it's time to come home and restore and rekindle that righteous relationship. The Bible says he's married to the backslider. And you may have slid away, but you don't have to slide back. All you've got to do is confess that you've fallen. And he's faithful and he's just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's the word. And you're my second appeal. It's to the backslider. But then, let me say this in your hearing. A person without a pastor is like a sheep without a shepherd. You're bound to go astray. And the reality is, you're devil bait. What the devil loves to do is just like the lion gets you away from the flock all by yourself helpless and without others to help bear your burden you need a pastor and not only do you need a pastor you need a people of God that will help bear your burdens for the Bible says the strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak and no church is perfect but I suggest that you become a part of anybody's church and since I'm biased I just believe that you ought to become a member of the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church of Fresno, California. And if in fact, this is not the church of your choice, I guarantee you my main aim is that you are saved. And if this is not the church of your choice, I've got so many friends pastoring churches in so many different regions of the country. I'll send you where you want to go. I just want to make sure that you're saved before it's everlasting too late. And that you've got a pastor and a people who, will, who is watching out for your soul. The door of the church is open right where you are. My brother, my 
sister, my son, and my daughter. Will you come and make Jesus Christ your choice? And if you're adhering to the Holy Ghost, because I'm just a vessel that's making the appeal, it's really the Holy Ghost that is going to urge you to make the choice. If you want to get saved, you can get saved right there in the confines of your quarters, right where you are. And if after having been saved, you want to become a part of this church, write, email us, come by 2529 East Belmont Avenue and make fellowship your church and allow me to serve you as pastor. And I guarantee you, we'll go to the next level together. I've done my job. I've preached as God gave me to preach. The praise and worship team, they sang. I was responsible for the word. They were responsible for the worship. Now the rest by way of witness is on you. If you're blessed, if you're saved, if in fact you have a church home, God bless you. But if you heard the Holy Ghost speaking to you, you know what you got to do. Listen, thank you so much for tuning in, whether it be by radio, 1550 AM on your AM dial here in Fresno, or by way of our Facebook page, Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church Fresno, or if it's by YouTube, Fellowship Baptist Church Fresno, however it was that you were the benefactor of this worship and this word. Hopefully it blessed you. And if that be the case, reach out. And it's encouraging to know that our ministry is reaching you wherever you are. Let us know. And until next time, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and give you peace. And thank God for the Holy Ghost. We'll see you next time.